All right, VOD viewers, we have leveled up. We are now level 51. Perhaps a little more than I would have liked, but uh, this will give us the ability to take on Gawain and not die in, like, one or two hits. I should maybe have a third hit for Tamamo, which is, oh boy, more than Tamamo generally gets. She's lucky if she gets two hits. But most importantly, it'll probably let me EX out her ma magic, and then we do the damage, and I feel happy about damage. So let's head out. To the final day, and the confrontation with the big gorilla himself. This is our last night together, Goshujin-sama. Hakuno, do it. With Tamamo, do it. So much happened. I'll treasure the memories always. But I'm sad I won't be able to make new memories with you after tomorrow. Oops, getting all teary-eyed isn't like Tamamo at all. I shouldn't be crying. I'm your companion. Your beautiful wife who will always, always try her best. Hakuno, you need to make sure your servant is in tip-top shape. Begin the mana transfer. Sleep is not necessary. Mana transfer is. Alright, let's head into the final day. You are facing the final curtain. The final elimination battle. How do you feel, master? My answer is obvious. Why even bother asking? I'm here because I've accumulated victories and crushed dreams. Because of the cost to others, I can't even imagine a failure. Leo or myself, the one whose wish the Holy Grail will grant will be chosen today. Ah, oh, yes. There was a certain young master who entered this tournament and has grown significantly. At first, this master appeared to be a sacrificial lamb, but instead fought on those wobbly legs. I may be an agent of the system, but your fight rouses my interest. Is your case a happy accident, or a genuine miracle in hundreds, thousands of years of masters? How perverse for this AI to be based on a clergyman. <laughs> now go. Show me the true de strength of your determination and desire. I shall wait on the first floor. Finished. Father Kodomine departs. The elimination battle is here. I'm about to face my strongest opponent yet. I'll make some final preparations. That means getting outfitted at the shop and sorting out any information in my room. Look, I'm just gonna say, if Hakuno wasn't a virgin, he could have he could have he could have banged like ten levels into Tamamo on the first night. I'm just saying. If this was Shiro, Tamamo would be level 99 by now. <laughs> All right, let's organize our information. The day has finally arrived. The level of the final battle. The way to the Holy Grail will, will open once the final fight is over. It's down to Leo and me, whose wish, will, whose wish will be granted. I have no intention of falling now, but today is the day where our fates will be decided. Before the elimination battle begins, I should go through all of the information I've accumulated. First off, the name of Leo's servant. I better make sure I have his name right before I do anything else. As Mordred. It's Arthur's son, Mordred. The servant is in burnished white armor. His name was given as Gawain. 
a knight of great loyalty linked to the legend of the round table who guards Leo with tireless vigilance. I remember the first time we crossed swords in the arena. As per his story, his strength is legendary. Wielding a sword that shines like the sun, he barred my way with unshakable resolve. The name of his sword is... The Sword of Absolute Victory. Nope. The Resurrected Sword of Victory. Yup. The Talisman of Broken Commandments. Ah, yes. A Talisman. That's the name of the sword. The Sword of Absolute Victory is Excalibur, silly. What happens if you answer wrong? You don't get the uh, maximum... You don't get the maximum servant info. So I'm answering correctly, obviously. Right. Also called Galatine. It is the sister sword of Excalibur and a weapon of great power when used by Gawain. At first, there was no way I could meet the stroke of the sword infused with the sun's heat. Now, the attribute that made Gawain one of the mightiest of knights was his unique constitution. When the sun was in the sky, all of his abilities were amplified to a significant degree. His noble phantasm alone makes him immensely powerful, but with this attribute, he was almost invincible. What was the name of that ability? It is the numeral of the saint. Three. Right. It was the numeral of the saint. The ability that ties his powers to the sun at its most powerful when the clock strikes noon. Matrix level E! But by hacking the arena and cutting off its light, I was not only able to wound him, but also crippled this ability of his to some degree. All that is to be done now is see how close Caster can get to Leo. I've made it all this way. Just one more. Just one more victory and then I can get my wish granted by the Holy Grail. The answer that I have sought throughout this fight. Talk to me, Tamama. Another save, because I like saving. I've got a fetish for saving my game. Let's take a look at that Matrix level E while we're here. That final info we got, the character background. One of the major knights mentioned in the Arthurian legends and often thought to be King Arthur's nephew. This is true. He is Mord... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Morgan's son. A knight said to be the equal of Sir Lancelot. Gawain was frequently at odds with Lancelot due to his slaying of both of Gawain's brothers. Although pure of heart and loyal beyond question, it was Gawain's all-consuming hatred that not only led to him being stripped of his knighthood, but also led to the downfall of King Arthur himself. Although his hostility inevitably led to his death at the hands of Sir Lancelot, he realized that it was his own lack of virtue that led to Sir Lancelot's betrayal and the defeat of King Arthur at the Battle of Camlin Hill. Up until his death, Sir Gawain was considered a paragon of knighthood, chivalrous, loyal, and gallant. Even as King Arthur became a legend, Gawain was content to stay in the background, doing his duty regardless of whether his efforts were acknowledged or not. In reward for his gallantry and loyalty to Arthur, as well as his eventual forgiveness of Sir Lancelot, Gawain was resurrected as a legendary soul, and, freed from the sins of his past, has once again reclaimed his role as the Knight of the Sun. Yeah, anyone with uh, surface level Arthurian knowledge is all like Arthur and Lancelot and Percival. But Gawain was, uh, Gawain was a, a heavy hitter in the Arthurian legends. Dude's kind of a monster. Let's head to the chapel and shove levels into Mamo's butt. I love shoving things into Mamo's butt. It's great. Maximum magic! Mmm, 255 magic. Feels good.
We still have 18 more SP. I mean, the smart thing to do is just shove it into defense and make sure that Tamamo doesn't die so easily. Boop. That's right. Tamamo's got special dialogue for if you max out a, a skill. Anything to say, Toko? You came for an alteration before you fight. My, aren't you the cautious one? Aw, oh, that's all. Any idea if getting your servant to level 99 gets a unique dialogue? It does, yes. When you level, when you get to Mamo to Max, she says she feels like she did when she was, uh, when she was Amaterasu, basically. And says that she couldn't possibly lose to anyone. And honestly, if you have a servant at level 99, uh, there is really no possible way you should lose to anyone. Except maybe if Kukulin gets a gay bulge proc. He's like the the only one I could think of that might give you a kill. A death, even. Could you have maxed out your strength and played Tamamo super wrong? Yes, you can do that. Um, the reason that I didn't is because Tamamo... It's because of scaling. So before we go into this, let me explain how scaling works real quick. Uh, Tamamo's stats scale, obviously, highest with magic. For every one level into magic, she gains 2.6 into her magic. That's why she gains so much extra magic, right? At strength, though, her strength is, I think, the lowest scaling stat in the entire game of all of the servants at only a 1.4. Meaning, leveling up strength on Tamamo is quite literally the weakest build you can do. Also, her defense scales like shit as well. Her strength and defense both scale incredibly poorly. And unfortunately, one of the biggest flaws with this game is the fact that... Um, agility and luck are both terrible stats. <clears throat> uh, agility and luck basically do nothing for anyone. The only thing that luck does is give you a better chance at criticals and slightly more defense when your health is low. And at that point, you're probably going to die because your health is low. But hey, you might get a crit. Uh, as for agility, honestly, I don't 100% know what it does. The describer for agility says it stabilizes damage stats and raises skill speed, but I don't know what that means. I've never known what that means. You know what? I could Google it. Let me see. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Agility. Increases your minimum damage, so that stabilizes your damage by lowering the range of damage you can do. And it will help determine which skill goes first if you and your enemy use a skill at the same turn. So it makes you faster on the skills. That's pretty garbage. <laughs> That's really, really garbage. That, well, there you go. That's, uh... That's why we don't level agility. But hey, apparently if you max out your agility, if you max out your agility, then the damage range will go from, let's say Nero could hit between 800 and 1,000. It would then tighten it up to 950 to 1,000. So it really, really tightens the damage range a lot. But the only reason to ever do that is if you have just a shit ton of extra SP for no reason. So yeah, not, not very useful. 
You would think there'd be like a chance to dodge or block an attack for agility, but nope. All right, let's uh, talk to the priest and head down. I'm glad we got to learn what the hell that stat does. It's been actually eating away at me. Talk to me, priest man. I have been waiting for your arrival. Are you ready? If it is your wish, I will open the way to the Colosseum. Now, please present the final cipher key. Oh, hold on one sec, one sec, one sec. One sec. Let me make sure our equipment is good. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's exactly what I thought. I'm thinking, uh... Thinking what we do here is... I'm gonna try... Boosting our uh, magic right here. Silver anklet. We're gonna go ahead and mega damage. Nothing like boosting magic, boosting magic, and then hitting for 10,000. Let's go. All right, the final cipher key. So, young master, who will have their wish granted? You, or the scion of the Harway family? I will be here waiting for the one who successfully manages to reach the Holy Grail. Young master, you have no idea how incredibly ready I am to watch you two kill each other. Do the stat ranks give any multipliers or just a formality? They're just a formality. Actually, uh, stat ranks do give you something. The higher the stat rank, the slightly higher your stat gain. Slightly higher. So, for example, when you're when we're at D level stats, we're getting like no bonus to our stats at all and at and once we're at like a every stat we get gets a gets a couple points bonus in it it doesn't make a huge difference but it, it does exist <clears throat> finally the battle i have been waiting for are you moved by the gravitas of the moment as well Hmm, let's think. Of course, I couldn't wait. Is that so? Then we are in the same mental space, even if we are not equals. You stir something up inside of me when we fight. Please don't talk about me stirring up your insides, Leo. I'm well aware that as the head of the Harways, I must scour any personal ambition from my heart. But if you feel this connection between us as well, then it's a different story. It means that you and I are bound by a stronger fate than the pool of individual connectivity. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I can't contain my joy. You've gone through a metamorphosis. In the prelims you were bland, unmistakable from an NPC. But now you've transformed into a warrior worthy of arresting my full attention. Warrior, I don't know. I rather you refer to me as a king. <laughs> That's quite the response we could give. Hmm, which one? Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, bum. You know what? 
I'm gonna try to get as much dialogue as possible, and I think if I make him refer to me, tell him to call me a king, it kind of ends. So we're gonna go for a long road. Yes, you've taken to the battlefield like a flower to rich soil. But the time has come for me to pluck that flower before its growth becomes unsightly. <laughs> I'm not done growing yet. Yes, you are. You will not get a chance to close the gap between our abilities. You will be always one step behind me, all the way until the end. Hypothetically speaking, what do you believe could bridge that gap? Easy. My servant is the best. I'm going I'm going 100% to Mamo loyalty. My servant's the best. Oh, master, that was so nice of you to say. I mean, it's totally true, but I'm still flattered. Yep, I win by a landslide against that narcissistic saber when it comes to both power and beauty. Big dumb guard dogs like him aren't cool anymore. People want the best of dogs and cats combined. Foxes. I never thought of it that way. Foxes are kind of like that, aren't they? Ho? Oh, did you hear that, Gawain? Care to respond? Not particularly. The battlefield is where our abilities will be put to the test. Petitioning my opponent for their agreement at the moment would only reflect poorly on your reputation. Can't talk unless your master gives you permission. You're no servant, you're a slave. You know what, I pity you. It is not that I am forbidden to speak. I simply see no need to, fair fox. I have already given my heart to my king, so whenever I do speak, it is already in accord with him. So you do whatever your little brat of a master tells you to. I'm glad I'm not you. You're spoiling your master. He thinks he's a king already. Pretty soon he'll turn into a despot. Thank you for the concern, but it is unnecessary. My master will grow to be a perfect king. The only thing he lacks is... No, I should not have said that. Nothing is lacking about my Leo just yet. Just yet? Hmm, so something caught the watchdog's eye. Well, I don't care one way or the other how great your king could be. Compared to my master, he's nobody. Your loyalty is beyond reproach, I see. Unfortunately, that means we have no choice but to fight each other. No doubt about it. My master is the one who's going to win. We'll find that out soon enough. We're almost at the battlefield. Man, Gawain's JP voice always throws me off. It's not as deep as I imagine Gawain's voice being. So I do a deeper voice myself. Oh well. With a gnashing of metal, the elevator grinds to a halt. Is it just me, or this time did the reverberation last longer and sound heavier than usual? In any case, this is it. On to the final battlefield. It's time. I'm aware this is inappropriate considering the situation, but I have one last thing to say. Thank you for making it this far. Now, let's defend our ideologies, Seventh Master. I mean, credit where it's due, Leo does straight up fight every single opponent he comes by. The moment has finally arrived, Hakuno. Although I'm afraid I'll miss you, I have to keep going. This is it, Gawain. Utilize your sword's full capacity for me. I have waited for those words. My body will be your blade, and I will cut a path to the throne for you. That's impossible, ridiculous, and stupid on so many levels, Mr. Knight. 
your master won't become a king. Because my master will win. Did I steal the words out of your mouth, Caster? <laughs> yep, you sure did. But putting those assumptions aside, your master isn't cut out to be a king. Is that so? How unfortunate that you can't see the plain truth. You're the blind one. You might be a cool prince, but that doesn't mean you'll make a great king. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of knowing a real king, and that's why I've always known you're not the real deal. That's enough, Caster. I won't tolerate a smarmy attitude from a creature like you. Fine. I'll shut up now. I couldn't care less anyway. Besides, it seems like you know what's lacking as well as I do. Plus, even if he was a king, he still wouldn't be in the same league as my master. I see. Although we've never agreed on things, I understand where you're coming from there. Both of us are loyal to the marrow to our masters. Yep, we are. And there's one other thing that annoys me, Knight of the Sun. The sun is kind of my personal domain, so I'd appreciate it if you made way for my master. Yeah, honestly, if any of the servants that were summoned in this Holy Grail War are suited to defeat the Knight of the Sun, how about the Goddess of the Sun? Live or die by the sword! I wasn't paying attention to what they said. Thank you for the 15 gift subs, Boogeyman. All right. Let's go ahead and get ready to really annihilate his butt. Raise magic. Raise magic. <laughs> Good luck, Gawain. You're gonna need it. You're really gonna need it. This is gonna do a lot of damage. Gonna activate Spirit Theft there. And we'll hope we can get a, a break in for free. See how much damage we can get here. Seven thousand. That was Pog. <laughs> Seven thousand is a lot. Seven thousand is a lot, a lot. Oh, I thought it was. And hey, guess what? I've got elixirs that can fully heal if I really need to. So, uh, we're Gucci. Okay, now then. Despite his, uh, dialogue there, he is not... Is not currently using an NP because his EX bar would be charged, and then I would be very scared. So, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. Die Jobu. Actually, uh, you know what? That's fine. This is a good turn for Merciful Sky after the stun, and then a big damage. Get a break in, and maybe get another break in. Uh, 
We can just keep that buff going while we're there. Let's get another really big hit. Nah, I had a feeling he'd guard, but we're still doing big damage. Maximum magic spells to Mamo. Mmm, that's so much damage. All right, he's got his MP ready. He's got his MP ready. This is Spook Spooksville time. Yup, okay, he's getting ready for it. Okay, his NP is either going to be on turn number 5 or turn number 6. I don't think he can do it on turn number 1. So it's probably turn number 6. So we're going to get we're going to make sure that we're prepared for it with a big old big old defense. Okay. Uh, do we want to start with the NP? I mean, we're obviously doing this. Uh, in case we take any damage before it, we'll throw a Recover in there. And do an Aphotic Cave defense. All right. Change the background music to our theme. Ooh, the critical. We'll be fine. Prepare yourself, Gawain. Oh, he's almost dead. Heal! Here it comes. Good. Good. Again? Again? You're just going to spam it? Oh. I guess Leo can handle it. However... Can you handle another big spell? I don't believe you can. What if you don't live long enough to get there, Gawain? Wait, we need a buffer magic too? Ah, uh, she'll do fine. See? Tamama's buff is the one that really increases the damage. We did it! I didn't need to level up nearly as much as I thought. Good old Tamamo late game damage is kind of crazy. This is what I said. When Tamamo gets to the late game, she's the strongest servant. <laughs> she, she, you know, doing 7,000 damage is pretty impressive. In one spell. I can't feel my fingers. My arms and legs won't move. There's no strength in them. 
I don't understand. Even though my heart has been pierced through, it feels like the, the hole is filled. Astonished, Leah remains unmoving. This must be a truly unbelievable conclusion to him. While staring at his small hand, Leo's breaths become thin and short. His heart will stop moving soon. He doesn't seem to be trying to escape from the pain, though. Ah, I see. What I couldn't believe was that I had reached my limit. Leo smiles with his admission. I never thought I could reach my limit. I wasn't even capable of imagining what defeat was. I didn't think I was flawless. I just had no fear. The way normal people's hearts quiver, mine never did. His quiet words are sorrowful, but a smile spreads across, across Leo's mouth. He's found some happiness even in the arms of defeat and demise. His joy is something very human and trivial. Achievement. His body's coloring slowly darkens. I already know what will happen. I've seen this scene play out before. The king-to-be will vanish. He'll disappear like the gods have decided he should never have been. This feeling that's come over me, it fears the unreasonable and rejects the irrational. One more time. I won't lose next time. These are complex feelings. I don't want to give up. That's a compelling feeling, but all of them are positive. I feel bitterness and grief as well, and I fear meeting death. <laughs> and this must be courage. I had not understood the real meaning of any of these feelings. I'm such a fool. Someone like me could never have led the human race. Gawain. You knew all along that I lacked something necessary to become a true king. My lord, no. My king, I... Yes, I know, Gawain. Though you knew what I needed most was to experience defeat, you still helped me win. You gave me your loyalty and risked your life for me. You knew that I would be defeated one day. But you tended to my growth anyway. I lived so illogically, but thank you, from the bottom of my heart. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have realized. I would have seen this defeat as a fluke and coldly ignored it. My king, I would have accepted you no matter what defeats you suffered. I am your sword, your knight, your growth is your own. However, I am honored to have witnessed the growth of a truly honorable king. Wow, Gawain, cheating an Artoria like that with a new king. With those words of praise, Gawain disappears. He makes no excuses and doesn't plead for his life. Of course he doesn't. He gave 100% for Leo. He had no reason to be ashamed. After watching Gawain flicker out, Leo turns back my way. He's crying. I'm afraid of going cold. 
This is the most frightening of human emotions. This is despair. I never even knew a basic feeling like this. His voice is bathed in sorrow. I don't know if it's sorrow for his death or for the person he was. <gasps> Defeat. It was a necessary obstacle on my path to the throne. I can't retreat after coming so far down this path. Now that I know defeat, I can become a complete king. Now. I can't help of thinking of mayflies. There's those insects who gain wings to fly and then die after just one day. There's nothing I can do. It's unfortunate. Zanendes. Bye, Leo. And then Leo disappears, gone without a trace. I'm the only one left. An emptiness I've never gotten used to wrenches my heart. That was the end, though. Everything is over now. It's really over. Isn't it? Target level 35, my butt. You go level 35 into this with Tamamo, you're fucking dead. <laughs> you will get one shot by his NP unless you have thrown a sh bunch of points into defense. All right. Look at all that new info. New info on Excalibur Galatine. So let's go look at that again. It's the same thing. That's not new info. The White Knight of the Round Table, that is new. Widely considered to be the equal of King Arthur by many, and the wielder of the lesser-known holy sword Galatine, Sir Gawain was fiercely loyal to the king, or more accurately, the king's station. Unlike Sir Bedivere, a trusted friend of Arthur's who wished only that he would find peace and contentment, Gawain's only concern was that Arthur maintained the throne of Britain. If King Arthur was seen as the personification of the moon, then Sir Gawain was the harbinger of the dawn, the sun. He was frequently compared with Arthur. Although Gawain himself ignored those comparisons and devoted himself to serving his king to the best of his abilities. Though loyal to the end, his irrational hatred of Sir Lancelot proved to be his and Arthur's undoing. Irrational hatred, my ass! <laughs> Lancelot murdered his family. Though Arthur eventually forgave his wayward knight's transgressions, Sir Gawain could not find it within himself to do the same until the very last moments of his life, and only after being stripped of his knighthood, excommunicated from the church, and causing the downfall of his sovereign king. With his dying breath, he swore that if he was ever given a second chance at life, he would support his king no matter what. Upon being reincarnated as a servant, Gawain devotes himself completely to the goals of his master, and by doing so, hopes to gain absolution, absolution from the sins of his past. Yeah, Gawain knows he kind of fucked up. Lancelot knows he kind of fucked up. Everybody fucked up. The story of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table is a story of people who done fucked up, despite being the best of the best. At the end of the day, the lesson you can learn is it doesn't matter how amazing someone is. They're still human. Let's save.